So I'm going to go on to my iPad and look at the Pearson textbook, chapter two and a bit of chapter one. Just give me a moment. Okay, so this is chapter two. And um, before we begin, you have to realize that the British North American colonies were all separate. So they all had their own governments and um, they were still controlled by Great Britain, but they were kind of like little countries at the time. So you have to keep that in mind. So the first set of factors that were going um, affecting British North, North America at the time were economic factors and it had to do with trade. And originally, um, Great Britain favored the colonies. It was called colonial preference. You can see it on this page here. Colonial preference. That meant that if uh, Britain was going to trade with other other countries, not the colonies, then there would be lots of stiff tariffs, and it was hard to um, for the, those other countries to uh, really really get any any goods into Britain because they would only get them from the colonies. So originally that's what was happening. And um, Britain then decided to move away from that um, in 1846. And it started to go towards a system of free trade. Okay. Um, the colonies, you have to remember, because they were separate, they had tariffs going, um, going on. So they, they couldn't really trade with each other. Um, so that was a problem too. In the United States, they uh, that um, ended up working well for a while because uh, there was a reciprocity treaty that was signed after Britain decided to go to more of a free trade agreement, and that was in 1854. So at least the colonies had some someone to trade with at least for a while. However. It changed in 1865, and um, the United States, they got out of the Reciprocity Treaty because they thought the, the British North American colonies were doing better than they were, um, and uh, so they stopped that. Now, the colonies had a real problem because they, can't, they, they couldn't really trade with Britain anymore, and um, they couldn't really trade with uh, the United States, so that was the idea the idea surfaced that maybe the colonies should unite and then you wouldn't have the, the trade barriers. Okay, so that's um, what they're talking about here. Another thing that's going on is uh, transportation and the transportation system was not great. There were railroads, but they they, they didn't go all the way through the colonies. There, there were gaps and um, <clears throat> There was a Grand Trunk Railway that went from Toronto to Montreal, and um, there were some other lines as well. But again, the gaps caused um, problems with the trading. So what they wanted to do was to extend the Intercolonial Railway from the Maritimes to Montreal, and then basically join things up. So you can see on this page, there were there were rail railways. Um, but, but not a lot, 106 in 1850, and then you've got the Grand Trunk Railway and, and a few others, okay? 1860, um, things are starting to get a bit better. Now, if they're going to make a railway go all the way from say Halifax to um, right through the Canada, say to Sarnia or, um, or Windsor or someplace like that, they would need money to do that. And the British banks would not give money unless they were pretty sure that it would, it would be, be paid. Bering Brothers, they were one of the big lenders. So um, if the colonies united, then that would be, there would be a better chance that the money would get paid back and then they would get the money. Whereas if they remain separate, then that would be a problem and um, you're not most, you're most likely not going to get the money. So there's transportation issues. There's also defense issues as well. Um, Britain, you have to remember, had a big empire and they were, they were fighting wars all over the world. And one of the wars they were in 
was the Crimean War in 1854 to 1856. They actually used something called the Thin Red Line. You might remember that from grade seven. And um, <clears throat> anyways, it was draining resources from coming to North America. So that was a problem. There was hardly any, any, um, any def def anyone to defend the colonies. Then there were the Fenians. Um, and some of you may have heard, may may realize uh, that two million Irish people came to North America in the 1840s, 50s, and 60s, and um, a lot of it had to do with the potato famine. But there were there were also just uh, many who just decided to come, and um, uh, there was a group that emerged called the Fenians, and they felt that Britain had treated Ireland very bad and brought misery to its people. So there was a group in North America that wanted to get back at anything British. So they, they organized groups in the United States, particularly in the Northern States. And they actually raided um, along the borders of some of the British North American colonies. Um, so that was going on. So it was more of a, a fear thing. And um, <clears throat> if the colonies united, then there would be a better chance to defend against these raids if they're all working together rather than the colonies working separately. Something else that was going on manifest destiny. That was the belief that um, the United States had the rights to all of North America and the civil war was going on as well. And there were tensions between the union that was uh, basically the United States and British North America. That's the British colonies. And, um, the, the Britain had actually um, helped the Confederacy, that's the, uh, the, the basically the South, um, by using Toronto and Montreal as bases to organize plots against the Union. So there was that tension as well. So uniting the colonies um, would, again, as I just said, would help in having a more unified defense policy and a better chance of def defending the colonies better from threat from the threat of the United States. Then there were political issues as well. Um, in grade seven, we talked a bit about the, the act of union and um, <clears throat> uh, you can see that there was some political instability. The capital of Canada moved all over the place. Um, Kingston, Montreal, Toronto and Quebec city. And this is uh, something important to, to realize the representation issue. You can see it at the bottom here. Um, the way the Act of Union set the government up was through equal representation in the Canadas anyways. So Canada East and Canada West, they had the same number of seats. And you can look at the population changing from 1851 to 1861. They still had 65 seats. But Canada West, it actually had gone up and Canada East had gone up, but the, the, the population wasn't as much as Canada West. So the problem with here was the Canada West felt that they deserved more seats in the legislature and the Canada East, they were just fine with keeping the, the, the seats that they had because they knew they would get their, their voices heard and, and not get drowned out by, um, by Canada West. I'm just going to go back to chapter one for a second. You can find it here. You might remember this chart that we set up. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you can you can see um, actually this is after after the Constitution Act, but it's it's similar, but you can still see the uh, the Legislative Assembly Canada West and Canada East. And it was exactly the same. Okay. Back to chapter two. So representation by population, um, that basically what that means is um, the more people you have, the more voters you have, the more representatives you're going to get in your government. And you're going to learn about these three politicians George Brown, John A. Macdonald, and George Etienne Cartier um, in, the next, in the next couple of lessons. And um, they had some big arguments. And, um, and then one of the big issues that they were, they were talking about was representation by population. So stay tuned for that. And um, 
we'll learn more about what exactly happened with all this going on. Anyways, I'm just going to go back to my computer here. So I, I hope that this um, I hope that this little explanation explains things a bit more clearly for you. What what's going on with the colonies and what might lead them to want to join together as one country? Okay, thanks, grade eights. We'll talk to you soon.